Okay, so I know I'm about a month late on this, but with the release of Tight Kubo's new one-shot, Burn the Witch, and in the wake of the release of the live-action Bleach movie, I'll be doing a few Bleach-themed videos in a row, starting with the most popular debate, Top 10 Bankai. For those unfamiliar with the lore of Bleach, the Bankai is considered the ultimate culmination of a Soul Reaper's abilities and an indication of the depth of their bond with their Zanpak Toe. The Bankai manifests itself in a variety of ways, but all of which serve the purpose of giving the Soul Reaper a massive boost in power and an ever more impressive way to dispatch opponents. I have to say in advance that my decisions are entirely contrary to general character popularity and instead are based on my own opinion and preferences, focusing heavily on strength, versatility, and style. But mostly style, because that's important to me. At the end of the day, I like what I like, and if your favorites aren't on this list, that's okay, because it's just my opinion. Also, full warning, no restraint on spoilers, and there will be some fairly big ones on here. Also, going to try my best to pronounce these well, and I will fall back on the anime pronunciation wherever possible, but if there is none, I'm just going to wing it, for better or worse. Now, on with the list. Number 10. Ichibe Hyosube's Bankai, Shirafude Ichimonji. Fittingly, uh, the first chronological Bankai is the first on my list. Though little examples are seen of it, we know that its main ability is being able to change the name of its target and, in addition, change the target's abilities and properties into that of their new name that it is granted. In the manga, we see Ichibe change Iwak's name into Black Ant, thereby making him small, weak, and insignificant like his namesake, the Black Ant. Right off the bat, I'd like to state how ridiculous Ichibe's Bankai is, and the only reason why it's this low on the list is because it's so stupidly strong, but we see very little evidence of its limitations or potential since it ends up being ineffective against the even more broken Ewok. That said, the overall potential for this ability is limitless, and in the same way it's used to weaken an enemy, one can assume that it could be equally as effective at buffing an ally. But again, we unfortunately don't get to see much evidence of the potential of this ability, so it just kind of goes to the imagination. But without a doubt, this is a fittingly powerful and versatile Bankai for the captain of Squad Zero, and that's why it's number 10 on my list. Number 9. Ikaku Matarame's Bankai, Ryomon Hazukimaru. Ikaku forgoes his usual spear for a massive three-part weapon, consisting of a large spade and guandao, which are linked by a chain to a giant guillotine-style axe head. As he continues to fight with his Bankai activated, it begins to grow stronger and stronger as it wakes up, and the dragon on the axe head begins to turn red, indicating how close it is to full power. This means that the longer a battle continues, the more of an edge Ikaku is likely to earn. With his Bankai fully awakened, Ikaku is able to release the stored energy in one massively devastating blow. His Bankai is notable in that, apart from the usual power boost it gives Ikaku, it's mostly just a big weapon and doesn't give him any new abilities, meaning it's entirely reliant on Ikaku's innate abilities as a fighter. This is what I enjoy about this Bankai. It doesn't give any flashy abilities or new powers, it's just a big friggin' beater of a weapon that relies on its wielder's own skill and not flashy tricks. A fitting Bankai for the third seed of the 11th squad, I'd say. Unfortunately, because we see it so rarely used due to Ikaku wanting to keep it a secret, and it's so basic and straightforward, it only sits at number 9 on my list. Number 8. Byakuya Kuchiki's Senbon Zakura Kageyoshi one of the more iconic Bankais in the series, and a pure direct upgrade of Senbon Zakura's Shikai, Byakuya multiplies the thousand razor-sharp cherry blossoms of his Shikai into hundreds of thousands, which he can freely manipulate to destroy his opponents by shredding them to ribbons. Due to the number of blossoms, this Bankai functions as both an amazing offense and defense simultaneously, being able to intercept oncoming attacks and act as a barrier between Byakuya and his opponent. This Bankai's ability also relies heavily on surrounding the opponent and hitting them from every angle simultaneously, leaving no room for evasion. When he's ready for the finishing blow, Byakuya concentrates all his Blossom's power into a singular blade, which allows him to perform his ultimate attack, the Shukei Hakuteken. 
This Bankai makes number 8 because of its incredible versatility and its ability to overpower enemies with its sheer numbers and different forms that it can take. That said, it gets a little old after seeing it so many times and considering it's just a numbers wise upgrade of the Shikai. And that, combined with Byakuya's endless self-assurance and overconfidence, only lands this Bankai at number 8. Number 7. Kisuke Urahara's Kanon Baraki Benahime Aratame Urahara summons the humanoid manifestation of his sword, Benahime, who takes the form of a giant black-haired woman in a robe, while Urahara himself maintains his Shikai blade for combat. With his Bankai, Urahara is able to turn into a surgeon of death, allowing him to slice apart anything within his range as if a surgeon with a scalpel, and also simultaneously stitch things together as a mock form of healing. This is demonstrated by him stitching his eyes up and returning his own sight when it was taken from him during combat. Its offensive capabilities are also shown by Urahara reshaping his own arm to make it more powerful, and also by stretching out Grim Jiao's arm to surprise Askin for the final blow. I like this ability because it's very versatile, but has a predominant focus on defense and support, something we rarely see in a Bankai. That said, considering Urahara's Bankai has been getting teased since the original Soul Society arc of Bleach, it felt a little underwhelming. That said, he was definitely right when he said his Bankai is not fit for training, though ironically it seems to be the definition of a useful Bankai for helping others. I'm a, I'm a little torn on whether they could have he could have actually used this Bankai to help with training, but that's neither here or there. Uh, this is definitely a very individual support Bankai that works well with Urahara's tactical genius and lands at a spot at number 7. Number 6. Rukia Kuchiki's Haka no Tagame Rukia's appearance changes as her hair and entire outfit turn pure snow white. In a flash, she creates a white haze that automatically flash freezes everything within her area, causing it to crumble and turn to dust before her. Though short and sweet, Rukia's Bankai is extremely deadly, being able to automatically disintegrate an enemy who is able to defeat Byakuya using his Bankai with just one hit. What also makes it interesting is that it can even harm Rukia due to how rapidly everything around her freezes. This is a Bankai that gets a lot of points for being stylish, yet simple. It's also a great double-edged sword due to indiscriminately harming enemies, allies, and even herself, meaning she has to always pick and choose when she would pull out this Bankai. That said, it is incredibly destructive and incredibly powerful. Unfortunately, we only get to see it once in the series and it was so fast that little else can be inferred about it, putting it at number 6 on this list. Alright, we're now entering the top 5, so we're going to start seeing the really heavy hitters now. Number 5. Kenpachi Zaraki's Unnamed Bankai when Kenpachi triggers his Zanpakuto Nozarashi's Bankai, he instantly turns a bright red and takes on the form of a literal demon. His Zanpakuto then turns into a smaller, almost shattered version of its Shikai. This Bankai grants Kenpachi even greater physical strength and speed than he previously possessed, being able to cleave in half an enemy who is easily tanking two other captains' Bankais with ease. I like this Bankai because, similar to Ikaku's, it just gives the user a really big power boost, but otherwise depends on their already formidable combat abilities. Being easily the most anticipated Bankai of the entire series, it didn't disappoint in my opinion. Having a presentation closer to that of an Espada's Resurrection, it completely alters Kenpachi's physical appearance as well as his weapon, Though it also doesn't give him any super powerful special attack or magical weapon upgrade, it is unquestionably fitting for the captain most well known for his physical strength and combat prowess, and an impressive display despite how little we get to see of it. Number 4. Genryusai Yamamoto's Zanka no Tachi Upon releasing his Bankai, all of Ryujin Jaka's flames disappear and are absorbed into the blade, which takes the form of a rusted and worn katana. In this form, Yamamoto, as well as his Zanpakuto, burn at the temperature of the sun, and anything that he cuts is automatically disintegrated out of existence due to the extreme temperature it creates. So right off the bat, a massively destructive ability. But a secondary ability is that Yamamoto can then call upon the corpses of all those who he has killed with Ryujin Jaka's flames and summon an undead army from the ashes of his slain enemies. 
this Bankai had to be here. Not only is this Bankai so powerful that just by being released, it can drain all of the moisture out of the air and, you know, eventually destroy the Soul Society just by existing, but Yamamoto becomes a freaking necromancer. There's little to say about this Bankai as it really speaks for itself. Its destructive capabilities are endless. The ability to summon any of his slain allies is both a great mind game and a a great way to create cannon fodder or distractions. There's really not a lot that this Bankai can't do. And the only shame of it is that we only got to see it once and it never showed up again in Bleach. Which is a different discussion for a different video. Number 3. Mayuri Kuratsuchi's Konjiki Ashisogi Jizo. The ultimately adaptable and creepy Bankai. Mayuri's Ashisogi Jizo turns into a giant baby monster thing and, and rampages on the field as a puppet of Mayuri's own demented and scientific mind. Prior to the final arc, it takes the form of a caterpillar with a baby's head and attacks with a poison gas and blades from its mouth. The final time we see it, it takes the form of a giant dark-skinned malformed baby that then births a small pale version of itself whose nerves it can shed due to being on the outside of its body, which though sounds very weird, is designed to be a perfect counter to his current enemy's abilities. The genius of Konjiki Yashisogi Jizo is Mayuri's ability to adapt and modify it constantly to suit the exact needs that he would require in any given battle against any opponent. Though, it relies heavily on Mayuri's ability to gather intel prior to a fight and anticipate many possible outcomes, it has shown time and time again to be innately destructive and devastating in battle, even in its base form. Also, the creepy baby motif. That alone is enough to make anyone double take and reconsider a fight. Number 2. Kensei Mugaruma's Tekken Tachikaze Kensei's signature dagger transforms into a pair of bladed knuckles and a purple arm wrap that goes along his whole back. With his Bankai activated, Kensei's punches cause literal explosions with anything that he hits. Also, as long as his fist is keeping in contact with the opponent, it continues to produce non-stop internal explosions. Alright, so as you can see I'm a big fan of melee Bankais that are just improvements on the unit's innate skills. That also goes double for hand-to-hand -hand combat abilities, and I feel like no Bankai embodies this more than Tekken Tachikaze. Although, we sadly don't get to see it a whole lot in the series, explosive punches are every action hero's wet dream. Plus, the design of the bladed knuckles, and even the regular brass knuckles he uses against Mask de Masculine, are just too cool and different from all previous Bankais, which is why it's number two on my list. Also, because lots of style points. And because I said so, get over it. And lastly, what you've all been waiting for, the obvious choice for the number one Bankai. Shusuke Amagai's Raika Goen Kaku. There could have been no other choice than the flaming seashell of doom from everyone's favorite filler villain. Being the best fire-based Bankai in the whole series, and combined with Amagai's strikingly good looks, there could have been no other choice. Okay, except for my real number one choice. Number one, and I mean it for real, Ginichi Maru's Kamashini no Yari. And yes, I am dead serious. Being touted as the fastest Bankai in the entirety of Bleach, combined with being one of the longest, Kamashini no Yari is nothing to laugh at with Gin being able to slice an entire town in half in less than the blink of an eye. That said, the true power of this Bankai is in its ability to leave a sliver of itself in anything it pierces, and with the command, kill, it is able to completely destroy his enemy on the cellular level, even being able to do massive damage to a Hogyoku-empowered Aizen. Pure honesty, I thought Gin was an alright character, with a nifty Shikai the whole series, but when I saw this Bankai, I was instantly in love and there was never a Bankai that I loved more. Just the length and speed of it alone is ridiculous and has limitless potential. Don't go there. But when you factor in the, his killing ability, it just makes for the perfect mix of power and versatility. 
combine that with Gein's interesting backstory and even the part that he plays in the story itself. And there could be no other choice than Kamashini no Yari for my number one favorite Bankai. Alright everybody, that wraps up my list for my top 10 favorite Bankai. If there was a Bankai that you have in mind that didn't make it on the list, and I'm sure there are, be sure to leave it down in the comments below. And if you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe. I'm going to be putting out a few more Bleach themed videos. Uh, but if you have any other video ideas in mind that you'd like to see me do, anything anime, manga related, I do video games, I do music, anything like that, leave it down in the comments below and we'll see if I can work that into a future video. Thanks for watching everyone. Bye.